experience. I hate the cheese. I was thinking about cheese. <laughs> I was introduced to Western food. Welcome to my channel. My name is Del Queen and I hope you are doing great. Um, this is a Q&A session uh, with Scott. Scott is not on camera because I have a flu and uh, we can't sit close together because we're trying not to contact each other. All right, Scott. So, viewers, this is uh, a Q&A session. So if you've got any questions, you can either uh, ask Adele or ask myself. Um, Adele can give you the details at the end of the, the video on how to contact us. Um, so this is our Q&A session. Today's uh, Q&A is about what, Adele? So today we are talking about racism and I have my share of experience with racism when I relocated to this country and I wanted to share that with you today but rather than just talking here alone and telling you about my experiences um, we thought maybe Scott can ask me because he's on the other side of all this experience because uh, there are people who are mostly on the receiving end and then there are people who are perpetuating the act of racism so I thought Scott would ask me questions so that he can understand sometimes how <laughs> it might feel to, for someone to treat you differently because of how you look mm. all right. I used to get that every Friday night in my early 20s um, first of all Adele um, when it comes to racism in Australia what have you found that's more in your face out in the streets um, than not Okay, so the closest thing that I experienced to racism in my country was uh, tribalism. Tribalism is uh, where people treat you in a negative way because you don't share the same cultural beliefs or cultural practices with them, such as language and geographical location. So uh, it's a negative, it creates a negative impact to coexisting together. When I came here, I observed a very huge different cultures and I've never been to a place where so many different people culturally coexist together and it was an eye-opener for me. I would see Asians, Africans, um, Caucasians and all sorts of people living together. To me that was new, mm -hmm. different people, yeah. I guess in there's a positive when it comes to tribalism though, there's a positive and a negative um, as of uh, told me in the, in the past that um, um, you don't have that closeness with your with your own people when you're over here um, but then again you don't have the, the, the negative side of things of the clashes uh, can you can you elaborate more on that oh uh, yes um, for us tribalism is usually uh, fueled by politicians uh, you never really notice anything different from the next person who is not of the tribe until this time for elections where politicians use the principles of divide and rule to get more votes and that's when you start learning that your Kikuyu neighbor isn't the same as you and they deserve to be killed or your Kikuyu neighbor or your Lua neighbor is rowdy and poor that's when you learn that but other than that, during normal times, people exist together. It's hard to notice the difference uh, about your neighbor until someone comes to tell you that actually your neighbor is different from you in such and such way. Have you found that since you've been here though, that you're missing the closeness of the benefits of being connected as a tribe? No, I'm not missing that because actually I came here and I found that there's a lot of Kenyans and there's actually a Kenyan community here and I never miss uh, speaking Swahili, I never miss speaking my native language, I never miss all that because there's all these events that are created, uh, there's a community of Kenyans, there's a community of other African countries like Nigeria and we don't shun away from actually crossing over, I might not be a Nigerian but 
I feel welcome to their events when they have one. So it's a very strong community and I'm not missing home. The only thing I miss is that I have to travel far to get the things that I wouldn't have to go far in Kenya to get. Yeah. Do you miss a sense of community that you once um, had in Kenya in the way of being able to just go next door and borrow some milk or a, or a cow or, or some sugar? <laughs> okay, so <laughs> we, uh, we don't borrow such big things. Cows are very important things uh, in our society and community. And if people don't just give them away because they value them, it's very important. The only thing they can borrow as a cow is uh, borrowing a bull to go and, you know, uh, if someone has a, is it called a heifer? The heifer. female cow, a female cow. Yeah, so let's just call it a heifer. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know whether it's a heifer, but heifer. people borrow um, a, a bull to go and if if the if the female inseminate, cow is inseminate, only... we'll call the we'll say the word inseminate, <laughs> inseminate the female cow so it can reproduce and make a calf. Correct. Well, let's just put it that way because I don't have a better way to put it there. Okay. That's it, but. What we used to borrow, there, yes, there's definitely that lack of sense of community here that I have seen. Uh, so that ever since living here, I don't know much about my neighbor. Back in Kenya, there was a very close, neat sense of community in that I can arrive home from work and not go straight to my house because I'd pass by my, my neighbor. I'd pass by my neighbor and if they're having dinner, they invite me and uh, when I go home, I don't even have to cook. Mm. That lacks here so much, so that if even if you are in trouble, it's very hard for your neighbors to know. Um, here, it's I can't even tell you the names of my neighbors, which is a very sad kind of a situation. It does, it, it does, we do have that situation here where majority of us don't know the the name of our next door neighbors. We do if we've been in the same place for a long time and we have the same thing in common or our children share the, the same age or they go to the same school or they have the same hobbies. Um, that's how we get our sense of community. But you may know the best friend of your neighbor might be on your left hand side and you don't know the person on your right hand side. Um, so that's how it can be here. Yeah, uh, we go as far as borrowing each other's salt and sometimes clothes. Clothes, hair products, <laughs> makeup. Yeah. All that stuff. Yeah, so that's what is lacking here. Yeah. That's the only thing. So to get that kind, to to get close to that kind of a situation, I'd have to travel, drive far to find my Kenyan friends if um at all I want to borrow such kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. What, what about um, uh, trying to find uh, different uh, friends of different races here? Like, is it hard to get in finding friends from, say, a, a, a white background or an Asian background? How, how is it that, you know, you can say to Kenyans once they come here, okay, you, you're here, but why, why should you stick to your own... Um, um, tribe or your own people, isn't it better to, to, now you're in Australia, to try and get into that other bubble? It is hard and not at the same time. It is hard in a way that uh, I think creating friendships mostly comes from having something in common to share with the other person. And in that way it can be very hard because uh, sometimes you struggle with speaking a language that is, you just have to speak because of convenient matters. And uh, it can be very hard for that person to, you know, keep talking English. Uh, English is not my first language and I'm more comfortable talking a language that I got used to talking uh, my mother tongue or Swahili. And having a friend from a different background or from a different race is you uh, from yours is can be challenging in a way that there is very little you share in common. And uh, I my experience is that the only place you can get such friends is being in class together. That is because that is the only thing that keeps you together because you have to you know be in a group together to do a group study or do a group assignments together. And that is the only place. 
um, you can have different people as your friends and normally it doesn't go far. For example, if you end your course or you finish your course or you find that you're only doing one unit with that person, you find that your friendship mostly doesn't go beyond that. But with people you share the same cultural backgrounds with uh, language, food and it's more easy to uh, relate and interact with them. What about if you want to get out of the bubble that you're used to because you're in another country? Um, how, how, how would you give advice to someone that other Kenyans that arrive and say, okay, I don't want to hang out with other Kenyans. I want to hang out with Australians or these other groups of people. How, how would you go about it? Would you try and enter in sporting activities, go to, go to a church, go to um, dance clubs or, or, or what have you, um, and, and try and broaden your horizons when it comes to having different friends from different uh, cultures? I guess it's about coming out of your comfort zone if you have to take that direction because uh, as I told you earlier it's more comfortable being friends with someone you uh, you you have you share a lot in common with with other people it's it can be difficult but then it's something that I feel that people should do because I don't want to come here and uh, be in the same bubble I used to be back then. I want to grow. The only way to grow is to learn other people's culture, to appreciate other people's culture. And that's where we end all these differences that we see in each other. Like for example, you see someone is white and you're not white and you suddenly feel threatened because in your head you start developing preconceived ideas that maybe they don't like me maybe so i think the best way to do is to break those barriers to learn about other people and that's the only way you appreciate other people's uh, cultural differences that's the only way you appreciate other people's different religious view because if you don't know them then you will never understand them so what you're saying it's psychological it's kind of like a brick wall that you put up a boundary around yourself that you think someone's going to think this way about you until you actually go and actually find out about what the person is about personally definitely most of the time it's psychological that uh, we have this fear within ourselves like uh, historically dark-skinned people have been gone through uh, social injustices and uh, the first thing my my personal experience is that myself when I see someone who's different from me mostly Caucasian I start thinking in my mind that what are they thinking about me they don't like me they definitely won't want to interact with me but most of the time if I get that courage to go and talk to them I find out it's actually the opposite mm. and it's it's so interesting that people don't normally think what you think they are thinking. Mm, mm. What about in the way, let's get back to race. What, what have you found um, are the three predominant groups um, when it comes to race in Australia? The predominant groups of course are uh, in Australia Caucasians, um, Asians and uh, those are the dominant. So you got you got a mix of Asian in there. If you class if you class Pakistan, India, yes. those people, yeah, they're Indians, uh, Chinese, uh, Philippines, yeah, Pakistans, yeah, yeah, okay. I think I, I don't know which comes as the third group, as you put it, but I, I wouldn't be able to to rate or class. I wouldn't be able to class it beyond. Asians and Caucasians. So have you had any uh, uh, anything that comes to mind in the way of anything that's happened to you racially since you've been here? Oh yeah, I've had several racism encounters and the first one was uh, when I was walking a dog. I wasn't, <laughs> I wasn't the one walking a dog, it was this elderly lady who was walking her dog and I was just going for my exercise in the evening and she was coming back from walking her dog but the way people here walk dogs and they treat dogs just like humans back in my village <laughs> when i think about it it was quite cruel it's something that i shouldn't be laughing but people were cruel to dogs dogs used to sleep in the rain outside dogs used to eat if there's food left after you guys eat so that was quite cruel you can imagine so this lady, she was, she's an elderly lady, she still is an elderly lady. This elderly lady who was walking her dog was coming towards me and we were on the same sidewalk. And um, 
as soon as she saw me, she moved over and crossed over to the other sidewalk. I didn't think much of it until uh, some seconds later, I looked back and she had crossed over to the sidewalk that we were in originally. So to me that raised a lot of questions and I thought, wait, did, did she just avoid me or what was happening? I didn't quite understand, but I just saw it as something that, you know, she must have feared me or she must have had preconceived ideas of what I might do to her or about black people in general. Yeah. Yes. I wouldn't, I wouldn't call it a fear from, from my perspective, I wouldn't call it fear. I would call it a fear if, um, you know, if we're, if it's late at night and you're in, and we're in the same house and I can't see you, I would say it's a fear because I can't see you because you're black. Well, then how would you explain someone uh, entirely avoiding to meet you physically? Uh, to me, I saw that as something, she'd say that she feared me for what she has had or what she knows in her head about people with dark skin. Yeah. Uh, I would never really explain fully, but I think uh, that was from my own back. conclusion, that's yeah. what it was. Another instance was when I was uh, going to a shopping center. At that time, I just got in a car. It was my first car and it was a big car. So you can imagine how hard it must have been for me to park since I was just a new driver on the road. And I parked between two cars and I kept going in and out because I wanted to keep my car straight. And then I didn't know that someone was watching me and he came and knocked on my window asked me whether I needed help in parking my car. And I told him that I didn't need help and he insisted. I insisted too that I was okay and uh, then he said something that really shocked me and he told me um, I thought you needed help because when you come from you don't have cars you ride on donkeys and camels and that shocked me to the core I was shaken I didn't know what to say until seconds later is when I got the courage to say something I told him where do I come from that's when he walked away because I think he, he started seeing things were about to get nasty. But overall, generally, I haven't had very bad experience with, when it comes to racism. The government is doing a lot here, as I've observed. Um, like when I went to school, I could see posters discouraging racism and any kind of discrimination. Like there'd be posters about we do not tolerate racism, we do not tolerate any kind of discrimination. And that made me feel like people are really sensitized about discrimination of any kind and it's really a good thing. I think it is something that all governments need to do. Like back in my country, there's actually none. Um, sensitization about coexisting as a community is new. So, and that's why it's still happening. The people who are supposed to be putting those policies in place, uh, discouraging such kind of behaviors in a community are the ones who are uh, fueling and perpetuating uh, tribalism. Saying that, would you say there is a difference between tribalism um, in the way of picking on someone because of their different tribe um, compared to racism? I don't think there's any difference. It's pretty much the same thing. It's only that the terms used to describe particular discrimination differ. But generally it's the same thing because racism is picking on someone because of their skin color while tribalism is picking on someone because of language or geographical location and so on and so forth. So pretty much it's the same thing. You're using something that someone cannot change to attack them. So it's the same thing with racism. So racism and, and tribalism is both the same kind of discrimination. They, they fall under the same bucket. Alright guys, so that's it for today. If you like this video, make sure you subscribe because we'll be bringing you more stuff so that you get a notification every time we upload a video. Otherwise, please subscribe and thanks for watching.